Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and another update in the Caesars Gallic Wars project. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last update on this and I just wanted to essentially make another video show you where I am, what plans I've got going forwards and sort of where we are right now. So as you can see I've been working my way through this big box of plastic that came in the starter set that Warlord Games kindly sent me um, and I decided that for the next part of the project what I would do is work on another two core units and then reward myself uh, with uh, one of the metal units that Warlord sent me as a little bit of a, uh, a way of sort of patting myself on the back for getting through two units. So what I'll do, I'll show you the um, the metal units and um, I'll do a little bit of review of those sets um, and then at the uh, as we get towards the end of the video you'll see all everything that I have completed. So as you can see, I decided that I would work on the Celtic Javelinmen. Now these are essentially just some skirmishers. They come with some wire spears um, and there is a little bit more cleanup that you have to do on these than on the plastic models. That's just part of the casting process and if you're used to working with metal models then you know that won't be a problem. They're very very basic sculpts but they fulfill the job absolutely fine of skirmishers and as I've already said this project is all about speed for me and not necessarily going into lots and lots of detail so I'm really looking forward to getting some paint on these. You get eight figures in the set, there's uh, a few repeats in there, um, but my plan is to put these on a couple of bases and spread them out a little bit and essentially have them in front of my other units as they go into battle. Now for the Romans I decided to reward myself by painting up the Scorpio. Now this is a crisp little unit, there was still some um, cleanup required where you've got the gates and the bits of metal flash but to be honest it's a very very straightforward model and I'm looking forward to getting some paint on it and I always do like a bolt thrower. So skipping ahead a little bit, getting the models assembled was fairly easy. You needed to hollow out the hands, so you need to do a bit more prep work with these than you would obviously with plastic models. But once you've got the hands hollowed out a little bit, those wire spears will slide straight in. As you can see here, I've primed it again with the GW color Wraith Bone. And as you can see, it's, it's, they're pretty straightforward models and they should take the paint pretty well. There isn't a huge amount of detail to worry about, so I'm hoping I'll be able to knock these out quite quickly. My plan with these will be to mix colours as much as possible to get some variation across them. So even though the sculpts are fairly similar, hopefully they won't look exactly the same. So if I can add in some stripy trousers, some different colour metal helmets, and maybe some bronzes as well as iron, then hopefully that will make the models look different enough that you won't really notice that there's only a couple of separate poses. Now the Scorpio was pretty easy to stick together, um, the two Romans are just single piece casts and the Scorpio itself came in about three pieces. You just have to hold it together as you're getting the um, sort of mechanism on there just to make sure it sticks. But I'll be painting these up using the same method as I've used on my other Romans and I think what I'll do for the tunics I'll do one in red and one in white. I didn't bother removing the plume off of either of these models, I didn't want to to have to do a lot of cleanup and to be honest as a nice little sort of separate base I think that will look quite cool. The Scorpio itself I'm going to do really really simply and the majority of it I think will probably be done with the contrast paint Wildwood. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go away with all of these models plus the other models from the units that I have stuck together um, and I'm going to get working on those and then what I'll be doing is coming back to you in a few days and I'll show you how I've gotten on. Okay, so it's been a few days now and I'm really really pleased with the progress I made So the first unit I completed was the Gallic Javelinman or the Celtic Javelinman if you actually want to take them by the, the product name and I haven't really varied from the plan that I laid out previously. I basically just grabbed a whole bunch of the set of different paints and I, as I had a red, I would paint the top of one of them red and then the trousers of one of them red. Then I'd go to a light green or an olive green, I'd do the trousers of one and the shirt of the other. 
I used the same process um, that I used previously, which is picking out one with stripy trousers or one with a, something a bit different um, every now and then, just so there can be some variation across the whole unit and add a little bit of visual interest. Now, since my previous update, I've slightly changed how I'm doing the basing on all of these miniatures for this project. Now, it was it was pretty straightforward what I did before, but as I looked at them, I just felt that there was a couple of things missing. So I decided to add some patches of static grass in. So after I've done all the tufts and the ground mixture, I actually come back with some PVA glue and I just put in some blobs of PVA here and there and use my static grass applicator just to lay down some two mil and four mil static grass, usually in a summer spring mix from a variety of manufacturers I just chuck it in one tub normally and that gave me the look that I wanted now the Scorpio I'm really really pleased with it's a very very straightforward model and I think it's one of those models that you can do sort of more harm by just going over the top with so I just tried to keep it very very simple so as I said I painted the whole of the actual bolt thrower with a uh, wildwood undercoat then I went over it with some washes and then I picked out the metal work I picked out the bolt itself and the fletching and then I would go over things and um, it just add a bit of strong tone from army painter the romans were painted in exactly the same way as i did my first roman unit and that was really really focusing on bringing out the reds and the flesh now these aren't obviously going to win any awards these miniatures but this whole this bolt thrower here i did this in, in a in an evening um, while my wife was watching something terrible on the telly um and to be honest i think that was an hour an hour's work so i'm really really pleased with the results for that so that was my reward for the romans now the other unit I completed for the ghouls was another unit of Gallic infantry and here they are. So another unit very very similar to that first one and I used exactly the same painting method as before. The only thing I changed was the basing and I'm really now pleased with the basing and I, I it's exactly where I want it to be for time and effort. Now for this unit I also added in the Warhorn and I added in a couple more sets of stripy trousers and was a little bit more confident with where I could put the war paint and things like that. So as I said before in the previous video the, these miniatures are really really quick to paint up and they definitely give you that feeling of a horde army rushing forwards. I did find myself having to look at my previous unit to make sure that I hadn't used sort of heads in the same positions or um that i hadn't sort of like doubled up on similar poses but to be honest i've done 40 of these now and i'm gonna sort of double up at some point as you can see i used one of the metal casualties from the um celtic casualty pack just to add uh, another bit of interest onto the base pretty much like i did with the roman one previously um and then i also added in a few more uh, bits of war paint and tattoos here and there and i also tried to vary up the stripes i was painting as well and not just make them red and white or something and white i decided to do uh, red and yellow and blue and green now doing the flesh i really seem to have nailed down how i really want to do that now and essentially all i do is i lay down um some gilliman flesh or some darko flesh oh straight over the wraith bone um undercoat and then i dry brush a medium flesh tone all over it and it just lets me get through these really quickly so i'm really pleased with how this lot are looking now for the Romans, you've guessed it, I just simply produced another unit of mixed gladius and pelum armed infantry using exactly the same method as I did previously. And, and as before, I've curved the ends of the unit round so you've kind of got that more organised look to this unit so it separates it visually from how the ghouls look. And I think on the tabletop, I mean if you couldn't already tell which ones were the Romans and the ghouls, just to sort of visually show that different style of fighting, you can really see now i tried to do things a little bit differently i added a gallic head here to the romans maybe it's just some ghoul who snuck in i don't know i was essentially just trying to play around and do a little bit of kit bashing where i could again i've cut the plumes off quite a few of these and i've added a few more dents and cuts into the helmets as well just to make these this lot look like they've been on campaign with caesar for a long time the shields were done the same as before using uh pigments to give a nice sort of color grade from the bottom 
And what I'm really, really pleased with on this unit is what I managed to do with the Centurion. So I decided only to have a standard bearer here, but I wanted the Centurion to look a little bit different from the previous one I'd done. So I had a look through my sprues and I found um, a sprue of early Imperial Roman Auxilia that Warlord had actually sent out previously when you bought rule books or, or some orders, just as a bit of a, a free gift. And one of them had a, uh, a Gladius, one of the arms. So I snipped that off, cut it at the elbow, and then sort of repositioned the Centurion here. So he's now in this pose, you know, a bit of a bit of a challenge, a bit of a sort of, you know, come at me pose. And what's quite cool is it has this neat little bangle on the arm as well. So a nice little detail to add some more interest to the unit. Obviously, it's a break in formation, but again, visually, it's just a gap in that shield line, which we associate with all of this Roman infantry. So doing that kind of thing, I find really, really adds a lot to a unit. It was a really simple just arm swap, basically, and just trimming the arm down to the elbow and then just positioning that um, sergeant, not sergeant, centurion in such a way um, that you, you get a little bit more of a dynamic look to him. And it just brings a lot to the unit. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for the next unit to try and separate it a little bit, but I'll have a good think and just try and come up with something. Now, this is where the project sits at the moment. So I have two units of Romans completed, just simple heavy legionary infantry. I have the Scorpio, and then I have eight bases of Gallic infantry that I've split into two standard units um, of Gallic infantry, and then we have a small unit of skirmishers as well. So I could add a commander to each of these forces, and this would be playable. I have also picked up some shield transfers designed for these models from Little Big Men Studios. They uh, they make these just to add some different colours in. And I think I'm probably going to use these white ones next. And again, just to keep myself occupied, I might do a veteran unit um, for the Legionaries. Put a few yet less men in it. Maybe chuck in that Varinus and Pullo model that I've got. And I really like these red ones as well. So as I'm going on and creating more Roman units, I just want to vary the shield designs where I can. Now, on top of this, I have got one additional thing to add into the project as well. So when you buy the Caesar's Gallic War rulebook, if you get it online from Warlord, you will also get this, which is a lovely resin model, and it's the uh, Gallic War's um, Hero Significa. Um, basically, it's the guy that jumped off the boat and said, follow me if you don't want to betray your, soul, uh, betray your eagle to the enemy um, when Caesar had his little foray into Britain. And I've got a really neat little idea for a command base with him so this will probably be the last update on the gallic wars before christmas i am still working on the project but as i complete the next couple of units i want to do the painting videos now i've had quite a few people ask me about the painting methods and i just want to be clear that the methods i'm i've used to paint these aren't the actual painting aren't anything new it's not anything groundbreaking what i've tried to do is really pick where i'm putting the paint to cut down on the amount of time it takes so for example the romans the shield covers 50 percent of the body so i haven't bothered detailing those areas so what i'll do is I'll do one for the ghouls I will do one for the Romans and then I'll do an update when I've got the rest of the box painted but my goal for the next update will to be have uh, the other two units of Gallic infantry painted another unit of Romans painted and a commander for each anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed this update please keep tuned to the channel if you like the video chuck a like down below if you've got any questions do the same I hope you all have a great Christmas and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon stay tuned for some pictures at the end and um, I'll be back in the new year with another update